Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Guys, welcome to this week's episode of Fresh and Grounded. Uh, this is with uh, Flip Whips. If you like whips and you want to flip them, this is the episode for you. Uh, so this episode is with a brother who goes by Mr. Flip Whips, Muhammad. And guess what he does? You guessed it. He flips whips. Uh, he sells cars. He buys and sells cars. And so if you're interested in making money or buying and selling cars, uh, it's a good episode. It's interesting to learn about how he got into it. Obviously, as uh, y'all already know, uh, I'm not really into cars, but I've really enjoyed this episode. I, I loved learning about how Muhammad got into cars. Um, it would probably be a good episode, actually, generally, because I'm a noob, and therefore I asked kind of the questions that maybe you're too scared to ask when it comes to buying and selling cars. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, learn about it, uh, the, the the business of buying and selling cars, um, how he got into it, his story, and um, at, how at such a young age he's doing so well for himself, uh, both in buying and selling cars, also doing up cars for some incredible people, and also actually... Um, uh, making great money uh, from his course where he teaches people like uh, you and I on how to get into the business of flipping whips yeah <laughs> so I um, hope you guys enjoy this episode episode 347 I believe of Freshly Grounded with Mr. Flip Whips enjoy it's quite dead they say yeah it's, not as, it's definitely not as alive as it was COVID times was amazing. Yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. We're on, we're good. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad. Wa alaikum as How are you doing, bro? Alhamdulillah, bro. You know what's really funny is I still have you stored in my phone. Do you know what I've got? What do you have me stored in your phone as? Literally, face all freshly grounded. Okay. Uh, that's going to be embarrassing now. I shouldn't have asked you that. What is it? Mr. Flip Whips? No. Because that would be good because freshly grounded Flip Whips. But I just never managed to change it because do you remember how we met? The guy that the guy that we met on the, I met on the plane. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's saved as Muhammad Plane because we met on a plane. Uh, yeah. It's really interesting because we um, have so many mutual friends. True. Uh, but we didn't know each other and we yeah. met on a plane randomly. Literally, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really interesting. I was coming to pray uh, Fajr. Was it Fajr, right? Yes. And he was, I was in front of you. And yeah. you were praying and then I was like, wow. yeah. something like that. So we met over a Salah. Yeah. Yeah. Because what boat, I always book, this makes me sound really pious, but if I'm traveling by the myself, extra leg I always book it for Salah, bro. It's if I know the prayer, I say for Salah, like, maybe there's a bit of enough like, that likes the extra leg room, but it, it does make Salah 10 times easier. Because I don't like, I, if I can try and predict a situation uh, where I can make it easier for myself, yeah then I will try and do everything I can for that, uh, to do that. So if it's like 30 pound more, 50 pound more, and I know in my head, I'm like, all right, Salah is not even an issue. If I know, I'll try and even travel in a time where I don't have, because it's only fudged really that you can't combine. Otherwise, you don't travel, if you're traveling eight hours, which is the maximum I'm traveling, <clears throat> Dubai, London. Yeah. If it's Dohar Asa Maghrib you can catch it at, like on either of the ends, isn't it? But Fajr, every now and again, there's a flight, there's a specific Emirates flight that's like at Fajr time. And so, the, and it's bro, Fajr happens just like, I think like about an hour, if it would finish about an hour before say, it landed, landed. It's bit, yeah. yeah. So for that, I try and book it just so I could just take that off my head and just be like, I don't have to stop panicking, looking, because I don't like praying Salah sitting down on a plane, man. I know some people, there's like a, I've heard people like, did like get into like comment wars about it and stuff, but personally bro i feel like for me from I, I obviously it could be different for different people but unless it's like a me, need unless you need to i wouldn't need, I wouldn't, yeah. really, I wouldn't Especially, really like to yeah this space is all then yeah. because yeah some, yeah some planes have like a prayer space dedicated prayer i think space. just saudi, saudi airlines, airlines yeah so, oh, when, when i found out about that i was like whoa this is this is sick but man even then like, is it just the plate like the big ones because probably I so yeah, yeah. Yeah, but as in the thing is, though, generally speaking, on the Muslim airlines, you're not going to struggle to find like they're not going to not let you pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my tactic has always been I just pray without asking anyone generally. On the Muslim airlines, sometimes I might ask, like, can I just even actually, no, I don't, especially on British Airways, I never ask because, yes, yeah, people, British Airways. Because, because if you ask, they, thing, they no. could say no, yeah, if you start, they're not going to stop you, so and it's always safe. happened. It's not very safe, but I always make sure I'm out of the way. I'm always making sure I'm conscious of other people. I don't yeah. try and bug no one, but I'm just in the corner and I pray. Do my thing, yeah. The other thing is, is though, I don't fly necessarily to like <clears throat> non-Muslim countries, really. Mm. I don't travel a lot to, I can't think of like a non-Muslim. travel a lot. Stop. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to travel a lot. I, t I tend to travel a lot, but I don't like to. But even I'm going back and forth to the same places, which are like Muslim countries and stuff. But anyway, we're on the plane, so I've got to say, Jesus, Muhammad plane. But welcome to Fresh Grounded, bro. 
So we got, to be here. We, got to, we got talking on the plane, didn't we? And then you were telling me about, we got this annoying fly, by the way. Those of you who are watching a video, you're going to see that. Like, we got this one fly in this room. We've got no ventilation. It's, yeah. Do you know what, bro? Do you want to open the door? Because now if they're gone, we keep fly the door open, hopefully. <laughs> oh, bro, it's so annoying. Um, but yeah, we got um, Mohammed, Mr. Flip Whips, because we got speaking in a plane and then it turned out that we, ah. Oh. Well, you got it. Well, I'm not Just ignore it, it bro. Uh, but it, it, is, it, seems, it seems to like us as well. So um, we got talking in the plane and, um, and it was really interesting, bro, because you were telling me about what you do, uh, the course that you run, and we started, started speaking and then it turned out we had loads of mutual friends and, True, yeah. um, and I found it really interesting, man. And then we, we met up when we were back in, back. You, live in, you live in the UAE as well. And so, got some food, uh, alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah, man, it was nice. It was nice and yeah. so tell us a bit more about it. So you're Mr. Flip Whips. Yeah. I'm actually going to title this as Mr. Flip Whips. Cool. And so, um, what is Mr. Flip Whips? Who is Mr. Flip, Whip, Flip Whips? How did the Flip Whips, Flip Whips brand begin? Great name. Obviously, it rhymes. Uh, I want to know a bit about, more about it, man. Cool. So, um, Bismillah. So, the, <clears throat> the way it started, I would say, is um, I, I got scammed. Okay. I got scammed by in a car. And I was trying to find the way out. Like, I need a solution. I need a solution because... I wasn't just going to call it a day. <laughs> so long story short, I bought this car. I, I was driving home. I didn't make it home. Uh, I was still like playing with cars here and there, but this was the main project for me, the main thing. Like uh, I opened the, what we call the coolant bottle, you know, where you, where you put coolant into the car. Yeah, yeah. You don't know talk about it, right? And it was just like pudding coming out. I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm on that level enough to know the coolant part. <laughs> it's meant yeah, to be yeah, clear yeah. coolant, either blue yeah. or red or pink right. or whatever. Okay. It was pudding. It was literally oil mixed with water, but oh. it was brown. It was it was nasty. And I had no knowledge like about cars. I was just like, well, well, maybe this is some sort of oil <laughs> for the car or something. Called AA or something. Um, came down and the guy was like, bro, your head gasket is gone. Um... I'm not sure if he came down to say that, but actually, no. I drove the car as it was. Like, it kept dying on me, and I'll start it and I'll drive. It dies. Got it home. AA came. Yeah. Then he told me, look, your head gasket is gone. And I was like, okay, what is that? I'm new to cars, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe 100 pounds, 200 pounds. He goes, it's about 2,000 pounds to get it repaired. Yeah, head gasket is expensive. I had that experience as well. And I got the car for about 1,500 pounds. And I was like, what? And I didn't know what to do, so I was. Calling the guy that I bought off, thinking maybe he'll answer, maybe he didn't know, you know. I don't know what his intentions were. Calling um, garages, trying to find cheaper quotes. And the reason why I had time to do all of that is because I didn't have money to fix it. I genuinely didn't have the funds. I, even the money that I bought the car with was actually from my parents. I took some money from my mum. And I was like, listen, like I just want to buy this car, maybe do some Ubering or something. I just wanted to make some money. Um, long story short, I just ended up looking online for parts. So I wrote the car's name um, and I was just looking and looking and looking and subhanAllah, I came across the same car, exact same car. The whole front end was like mashed. He must have hit another car or something and they just wanted to sell the car damaged as it is. <clears throat> Bear in mind, I have the same car. So I have the body, I have all the parts. Just mechanically, my car was finished. This was the exact same car, mechanically Obviously. perfect. Body finished, so I just thought, yeah, let's negotiate. So I'm calling the guy, I'm talking to him, like, yeah, look, mate, how are you? You're right, what not? And he was just like, a lot of people waste my time. If you're serious, come down, have a look, we'll talk. I was like, cool. I called my cousin, uh, and I was like, look, you know, come with me because you know, like last time I went alone, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little bit long. Just come with me, let's have a look at the car. And subhanallah, and the your rich, cousin knows about cars. No, we're both we're both at the same level now. He knows a lot. We both flip cars, but. At the time, we didn't have knowledge. The, the reg of that car was actually M0, M, it, it said Mo at the beginning. So I was like, yeah, this is definitely for me. <laughs> when they had a look, mechanically, the car was perfect. The only difference was that that one was manual. The one I bought originally was automatic, but that I wasn't fast. And I managed to get it for 800 pounds. Nice. Uh, it had, literally, that was, all my money that I had, by the way. The airbag was, like, popped. The the front of the bumper, the lights, the bonnet, it was all in. And I didn't have money to recover the car home, so I just drove it. Like that, with the airbag popped. Well, like, I was steering the wheel with the no airbags. <laughs> yeah, bro, like, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I lived back home for a bit in Sudan, so I saw crazy things about cars and just, like, bro, the car drives, the car drives, didn't it? I took the risk. 
Now, if I like taking me, if I went back in time, I would have never done that. Like it would, it could have cost me my license. I'm pretty sure it's illegal. Anyways, drove the car home. There was this mechanic around the area. I just always used to see him. He's just changing his own cars, or your maybe one or two neighbors, or you like changing servicing their cars for like a bit of change and stuff like that. And I was like, listen, you know, this is what happened to me, so and so forth. Can we? Can you help me? And he was like, yeah, if you're going to pay, yeah, I'll help you. No problem. And I was like, yeah, cool. I'll pay you next month. <laughs> and he was like, okay, like, I'm down. <clears throat> Ended up, that's how I started basically learning about body parts and body panels and whatnot. We took this bonnet off, put it on the ground, put that bonnet, just started putting everything together, subhanAllah. And um, yeah, it came along nicely. It, just, it was different colors, but point was I got the car together, got the car painted, sold the car. Made a profit. Oh, you sold it, so you didn't. So you never kept. That I never car. kept it. No. Okay. And you sold it for profit, and sold then and then you caught the bug. Alhamdulillah. And um, what actually ended up happening with the damaged car is that I just scrapped it. Okay. So I called it a day, got a couple hundred pounds back from that, flipped this car. So the money that I all put in, Alhamdulillah, I think I had it all out. So how much did you profit from your first car that you sold? Oh, you just basically made your money back. I just made my money back. Yeah. Okay. In uh, including the loss. Including the loss. Yeah. And then you bought another car? I just kept going, yeah. So then I bought another car, flipped that, bought another car, flipped and that. And so at this time, were you still using the guy near your house to like help you? Uh, I stopped using him because obviously I'm not there anymore, but I used him for years, man. Oh, really? I used him for years, yeah. I used him for years. And uh, and so how many cars have you sold by now, Ooh. would you say? Over 100? Yeah. Really? Easily, yeah. So you're just buying cars, doing them, might be selling them? I'd say over 100. And how, how do you know what car is uh, how, like a good, which car is like a good investment? So the way I check is, uh, there's a video about it on my Instagram. Uh, so the best way to check it is to get the car's registration and mileage and put it on Auto Trader. There's a section that says sell my car. You put your mileage registration, it gives you an evaluation. Even that evaluation Auto Trader gives you, it's slightly over that, but that's like, a good rate to Fine. to negotiate. Good starting from. point. Good starting point. So that figure, I have to buy the car under that. Maybe like five hundred pounds under six hundred pounds. Depends on the car. So if I'm investing about five ten k, I want it to be maybe two k under that, two and a half something like that. Normally, those expensive cars would tend to have problems. Like I I was flipping a Range Rover recently in the UK. I heard they're a nightmare. <clears throat> they are, yeah. So. To be honest though, I've flipped many Range Rovers. This is like my third one I'm flipping. Third or fourth, third, I think. And um, it had no, uh, the engine was seized. So that's a common issue with Range Rovers is that the engine will just go, or randomly it will just start to have electrical faults. Okay. This one, the engine was just gone. And um, uh Cool. Yeah, I'll just say the story. I was thinking, should I say this or not? But anyways, <laughs> so I bought the car. I bought that car. I actually part exchanged it with another car that I had. Right? So the value of the car that I had, you have to listen to the numbers well here, yeah? The value that they had that the car that I gave to the guy was around, let's say, 10K. Okay. 10K. I'm listening well. Let's say 10K. He wanted 13K. Okay. 13. So we managed to do a swap. Right? Okay. So now I have a car that's worth 13K. He has 10k. Because he's got no engine. Fine. He has what? 10k. So I put in what? 10k? Around 10k. Um, taking that car, took it to uh, a range of a specialist, spe specialist, and I got the engine replaced, like the block replaced. Well, anyways, it's a new engine. It's not new because it's an old car, but it's used, new, whatever you want to call it. Brand new second hand. He got the engine in, he got the car functioning, and that cost me about five and a half k. So in total, that's like how much? 15 and a half K. You can say 15 and a half, or you can say, because he was selling it for 13, we can even say, let's stick to 15 and a half. Car's worth about 21, 22 on the market. Okay. So that's how it works. That's the profit. That, the, that's the profit you want to be looking at. About two to three K, maybe four, if you're lucky sometimes. With this one, inshallah, I think I'm looking at like 4K profit. And so um, what's, that, that's, actually, that's actually good that you mentioned that, because I've always been intrigued. What's a good profit for uh, buying and selling cars because sometimes I've heard of people buying and selling cars and they'll be like yeah I bought this for 10 grand and I sold it for you know 11 grand 
and I see the amount of work that goes into it. Is that not worth it? And I think to myself, is it worth one thousand pound? Because the uh, first of all, the amount of time and effort that you put into it, and then secondly, you probably have lost even more than that if you think about um, expenses. Yeah, some other expenses that Insurance, perhaps you haven't accounted fuel, for and, and things like that. And yeah. so it's interesting because obviously you teach. A co- what I love about buying and selling cars, my limited knowledge of it, by the way, is that it seems like it's some something that people can do as a halal business. And so uh, you can work for yourself. Uh, yeah. Even if you do make a thousand pound and you can, you can, uh, um, I don't know, is it realistic to sell a car a week? Yeah. Or, so then you're doing four thousand pound a month. So it, it seems like something that somebody can pick up, take it as a full time job, and do it in a Muslim, uh, like in a halal environment. So that's what I like about the business idea. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm intrigued about that because um, it sounds like well, well, you just mentioned there with Range Rover, okay, you're making five six k profit. That sounds like you know a nice chunky piece of profit if you're doing a couple of cars in month. Now you're making like really good money, right? But is that normal? What's like a normal profit? And when you're teaching people how to flip whips on your course. Um, by the way, that brand name is phenomenal because it's literally a verb. Uh, uh, <laughs> but when you teach people how to flip whips on on on, a, on your course, yeah. what kind of feedback have you received from them in terms of the kind of money that they're making and and have they left their jobs and things like that? So there's one student, Darnell, his name is. He is flip. He flipped over ten cars now. He's flipped over ten okay. cars. Okay. In what period of time? Three months or so. Okay. Three four months. So that's good. He's he's yeah he's like. He's on it. Okay, so we were talking. I think was it yesterday or the day before? Yeah. He's literally about to quit his job, and he was asking me about it, and I was like, "Don't ask me, bro." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit of a that I'm <laughs> ask someone else. But he was just like, "Yeah, like I'm making good money, and I feel like this is for me, and I'm doing well." And I was so proud to get like, yeah, it's amazing feedback because to me, it's like I've actually changed someone's life. Yeah, of course. You know, and there are those who are struggling. There are those who still have their car. They're not able to sell it maybe or we've had some issues with the body worker that the car's been to and so on and so forth but and you you coach them through this stuff yeah we do oh, okay <clears throat> so we teach them where to like find a, a, like a garage near you and how to like source a deal with them and how to like get things done at a trade price oh, wow because you're, you're a car trader now officially and so on so forth. we teach you all of that from a to z more okay. or less um and um that testimonial was i feel like that's what kept me that's what's going to keep me. I wouldn't say, how do I put this in other words? Like, now I'm certain about growing the course. Like, yeah. I was always about, not 50 50, but I was a bit skeptical. Who was the word? Skept- skeptical, yeah. Skeptical about yeah. it. I was thinking, should I? No, this, that. Even starting it up, I wasn't really keen to do it. So it was uh, Brother Imran, mm-hmm. so he. Um, yeah, he was just like telling me, bro, like you can teach people this. Yeah, of course. You can teach people this. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, he was like, bro, trust me, you can teach people this. Because I remember once I met him, I went to him uh, and I was driving a, a Ferrari. No, sorry, a Lamborghini. It was a red Lamborghini. And to me, it was just a normal day. Like, I'm just getting some stuff done with the car. It's a client's car. You know, meeting them around. So I would just take that car and take it back. And he was like, bro, you need to <laughs> do something online. <laughs> Bear in mind, I, I'm not... Like, I'm not really a social media type of guy. Okay. Don't really like cameras. Don't really like being out there. I don't really have a reason to. I just don't like it. Like, it's just not me. Um, so I always just, I, I wouldn't really listen to it. I was just always like, yeah, I'll just listen to it. Let it go one year out, the other year. SubhanAllah, when I did start it, like the progress and how, like, I wouldn't say I regret not doing it sooner, but. Advice I would say to people like, well, I just look into what people advise you to do, especially those that are older than you, more yeah. experienced than you. Like, that's another thing. Like, I'm very proud of starting up. I know, like, even if it's it's still fairly new, there's a lot that needs to go into it. But alhamdulillah, I'd say I'm very proud of starting up. No, I mean you're marketing it really well, and it's also a very marketable thing uh, because it like for the reasons that I just said at the, uh, earlier about it being something that it seems attainable it seems difficult but it seems attainable it seems like if you don't have knowledge on it if you work hard and you're willing to make a few mistakes and stuff like that that uh that you could that you know within a few months time you could uh start um having like a good income for yourself but so so but back to the original question what is it that um an average person can make from flipping, flipping cars. cars in a month so yeah. i would say maybe it depends on obviously how much you put into it but you could it can be realistically anywhere between 
two to five k, two to six k. Okay, depends on how much time you give it and how much money you put into it. And how often does it happen that person can have a loss? Is that just dependent on how good you are? Of a salesman, of someone who can find a good deal, things like that. So here's the thing. A car is a car. It's metal. It's, it's, you can buy a car with no issues now, get home and something could go wrong. So it's always, there's always a little bit of a risk. That's why checking a car thoroughly is very important. <clears throat> That's another thing that we really focus on when teaching people and students, like checking the car is not a joke because a lot of, being from the UK, a lot of people do scam. A lot of people do, like I bought many cars where the mileage gets dropped and stuff like that. So you buy the car with fake mileage. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I got my ways to check and so on, but getting that information through to people is, is not as easy as you think. Can't a person just, this is me speaking as a novice, like, can't they just pay £30 to the RAC? I thought I heard you could do that. No, so that's the thing, like, clocking back mileage, RAC won't really be able to find that it's out. Fine. Who can find that easily. out? How do you find that out? Take so, like a garage guy. Digging, innit? Digging, yeah, yeah, you yeah. need to dig in. There's a machine, there's a computer, it's like a car computer tool I've seen that like they plug it in you and plug they get in. information there's one that yeah it's very good that people should actually look into getting but not now deep into when you're doing it mm. I didn't need it I wouldn't need it but you plug it in and it gives you like the correct information ah. uh, the correct mileage yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there's a guy here in Dubai actually that does that Okay. so he's got that machine and people call him out to come and check the mileage on cars that they're buying here because it's a, I've thought flipping cars would be easier here but it's nowhere near really it's nowhere difficult near, nowhere near yeah, no, I bought a car in January. It's still in the garage. No way. Oh, it's, it's getting fixed. Yeah, okay. since January. Wow. It's nearly a year. And do you well, have a... So now you have a... Do you have a connect at garages here now? Because now that you moved... Yeah. Or, because didn't you have a garage? I had a garage in the UK. Oh, you had a garage in the UK. And that was with Abu Bakr? Yeah. Okay. And now... Aki Autos. Aki Autos, yes. Yeah. Okay. Because now he started a, a new rental. initiative. Rental. Yeah, he did rentals. Yeah. And... Um, Okay, so and so back in the UK, you uh, eventually moved to like doing things in your own garage. Yeah, just doing things in house. How was it running a garage? That must have been tough. To be honest, I, I needed to go through it. I always wanted it. So now that I went through it, Alhamdulillah, it's. I'd say the beginning, like the beginning, was draining because you just constantly need to need to be there. Like you have to be there while whilst everyone's getting trained and used to things and used to like, I don't know how to explain it, but in other words, I would sometimes be in the garage where I don't need to be because I will do the job a lot better than whoever we have, for example, doing the job, okay. right? for example. Yeah. And that would drain me because, okay. again, I didn't know. I think I heard Mohammed Andalusi say this, what, like 80%. If someone just does eighty percent of a task, it's good enough. Like, if you can find someone to do eighty percent of it, yeah, that's good. It will keep things going or whatever. Something like that. Along those lines. Along those lines, I wasn't like that. I used to think, you know what? I've got time. I'm gonna go because I'll do a better job. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I liked being around cars. I liked like making sure everything's intact. I wanted a good name for the brand. I wanted everyone to be happy. And um, I feel like that was very draining. The first. Four months, five months, I would say. But in general, it was good. Good money. It was like we were getting so busy, we had no space. Okay. We were you taking space. in like general customers? We or it was anyone. just... Okay, fine. Anyone, yeah. Just like, a, like a just normal car garage. Just a car garage, bro. And, um, and it's interesting that you mentioned Mohammed and Lucy because then um, you obviously sorted his car recently. So now you've gone from just uh, buying and selling cars to actually doing cars up as well. So someone can buy a car, they say, Mohammed, I've got a car and I want to have this in it, I want to have this in it, I want to change the interior and you will take care of that for them. I'll right? just source that, yeah. And then you charge just a service fee for that? Is that how you make money from that plan? Yeah. That thing? yeah. And that's just another sick thing that you could charge for a course, isn't it? That's like a second course. It is. But another thing, something I realized recently, another thing, this Mohammed Andalusi also said this to me, which was, you have to stick to doing one thing okay. and perfect it. Yeah. And that's something I wasn't really... This feels like one thing though, it's like still cars. It's still cars, yeah. but to be honest with you, you, you can't, you can't, I can't, I can't run an institute and then flip a car and then customize this car. Like, yeah. it, it, I was doing it, it's, bro, it's, it's draining. Yeah, like, fair, you would know. Draining. I just feel like there's uh, a market for people who want to buy and sell cars. And I feel like there's a market for people who don't want to go through the hassle of 
sourcing, going to auctions, maybe getting scammed, but they do like the business of cars. They do see potential cars, so they say, okay, I, don't, I wouldn't mind having clients who have cars who want to make their cars better. So I'm not buying the same cars, but I'm like ch charging a service for like doing things to the car. Maybe like down the line. That actually- uh, I think just sourcing that type of stuff and teaching and just sticking to one lane to doing, when I say doing one thing, I can do all of that, yeah. but from the phone maybe. Do you know fine, what I'm trying to say? Fine, fine, fine. So I'm mainly, because for example, like with, with, with teaching the students with the program, with the institute, that takes a lot of time. Oh, so you're not like public with the fact that you uh, customize cars? So, and I wouldn't say I'm not public, but I'm not as big uh, on customizing cars as I am. You're Mr. Flip Whips. Yeah. You're not Mr. Customize Whips. Yeah. So yeah. One, when I customized Mohammed's car, that was like the fourth, third or fourth car I customized in Dubai. Okay. And... SubhanAllah, I don't know what it is, but things never really go to plan. How, as how accurate. did you have his car, by the way? I feel like you had it for a while. We had his car for about maybe like four weeks or something. Three, oh, okay. Four weeks, right. something okay like, maybe even more. I don't know exactly. But okay. Because you had it, it was on, a on the plane, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I remember I had to drop it off for him to start and then I had to catch a flight the next day to UK. And then I remember it was a while before he posted on his socials that he was picking up his car or something. It was a while, yeah. Yeah. Along that, he done a lot. He done a lot. He done the interior. The exterior of the car, the wheels, the alloys, the everything. Oh, he done it. That's sick. <laughs> because he's got star lights with the roof, screws in the back. Long back. His car looks sick, man. And so, nice. and, and you just took care of all of it, basically. Everything, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. So, um, it's interesting because I, <laughs> uh, the other day. Did you see his car, by the way? And I've only seen it on socials. I haven't seen it in person. Yeah. When was the last time I saw Mohammed? I think just when he did the podcast. It's, it's actually weird because. When you move to Dubai, you think... Um, I think oh, I forgot to mention. His head rests say Andalusi. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've seen that. You know what's interesting is that uh, when you move to Dubai, you think to yourself, well, I'm moving to another country and it'll be nice to feel familiar and see individuals and people that you know, people that you know and stuff. But then life gets in the way and you think, oh, Mohammed Andalusi is just up the road, Imran's here. You know, like, it's just everybody's like around. Um, but you don't really see anyone, and, and it should make it a thing, isn't it? Uh, like with everyone, like you know, you wake up every day, you got your routine, you're doing the kids, the school run, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to. Um, so it'll just be link nice up to and meet up. Of yeah, course, yeah, we should. Do you know what? You got to make effort because even with the boys that live around here, like we um, we have to really make an effort. Bro, I think it went in my ear. No, 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 no it came out. Okay. It went in for a minute, popped in, and popped back out. But that thing is refusing to leave. Fed is more than one. Where did it come from? It must have come all the upstairs. The, oh, the boys are always leaving the um, the garden door open, man. Uh, so anyway, so but yeah, it's true. But when you when you like, I understand it now. Like when you're busy, you're busy, bro. Yeah, you're busy, man. Especially in Dubai, bro. Like, yeah, it tends to be a lot more busier. Yeah, to get through it in it. Yeah, like when you're busy, you're busy. Even in the UK, I used to be so busy, bro. Like, I, I think I was more busy in the UK. I was, I, I was much more stressed in the UK I as well. I was the same, yeah. But more. you're busy in Dubai for a different reason. It's a good reason. I mean, you're busy in Dubai because there's a lot of opportunity in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And so... A lot of networking. Networking is amazing. Yeah, and there's a lot of networking, a lot of opportunity. And so you're like focused on... Uh, like you're very close, like what's happening in your close vicinity. And for you to like link with someone, it's sad, but like link with someone from back home, it's like, all right, I'm going to plan to do a dinner with my man. We'll go in. Because you start building, very far start building your own network in your field of business. So like, you so probably like built connections around cars and stuff like that. And the only thing that you and I relate uh, with each other on is the non-business world, right? Like Islam, brotherhood, our um, mutual friends. Uh, but in the day-to-day -day life of, I'm young, I want to like get it while I can, and yeah. I've only got to limit my time, and I'm in and there's all these people around you, you're just like, oh, right, I'll get to that, but it's sad. Uh, but bro, with regards to the car thing, uh, so I, I'm not, my, the, the listeners probably already know this, and you know this, but I'll say yeah. it again. I'm not into cars, right? And um, I'm not, that's, that's kind of, it's not a brag, but um, it's kind of a brag, because I see that people who are into it's cars, not a bad thing. bro, I see people who are into cars, bro, they, it's not good for their wallet. <laughs> and not, yeah. And so I feel blessed that a lot, but to be fair, what what I don't have in cars, I have like technology. Like I'm like always like, uh, like to have like the new new technology and stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, everyone has their own fitness, right? Uh, but um, recently I was like, I want to get um, uh, Apple CarPlay in my car. And so I was going to go to a garage. Now, 
what I realized is that actually it would have only cost me about a thousand dirhams. But when I was looking online, I was asking people about it. It seemed like it was between three and five thousand dirhams. So I was like, bro, three and five thousand dirhams, it's like a thousand pound to fit Apple CarPlay in your car. So I was like, and I already had a reverse camera. So I was like, so someone was like, bro, just grab it on. Um, uh, you talk to the least technical person, yeah? As in with cars and like DIY. Yeah. Someone goes, just grab one on Amazon, a monitor with CarPlay, and you just fit it in yourself. And they sent me a link to a YouTube tutorial. I was like, oh, that actually seems really easy. Like, you pop it out and you pop it in. And so I bought it on Amazon for 530 dirhams, so you're saying about 100 pounds. And I was like, but if I can buy it for 100 pounds, just plug it in, sick. So I bought it for 100 pounds, searched my car and the year and the model and everything. And then it arrived, turned out the casing was wrong, but the monitor was still working. And so. Fawaz and I basically figured it out. We were sitting in my car, like, like yeah. watching through, like unplugging it. This is literally the other day. And then um, we used a double-sided tape to stick it on the original casing. Awesome. But we got it working. So now I've got car in my car. And I, I, I fixed the monitor. And it, it made me think of you. But we couldn't get a reverse camera working. And then, I didn't know this, but then yesterday I was in Al Kuz and they've got loads of like car... Um, uh, customization shops i just pulled up any random one and i said i want you to do reverse cameras they were like yeah there's like a yellow plug in the yes back. it's yellow plug yeah but the, but we plugged that yellow plug in turns out you, you plug can't, in the wrong place no we did actually put, fit um well by the way that's another hilarious thing is that we did something probably really dangerous we just like plug in like the wires wherever yeah. they can fit that's yeah the worst thing you can do. but, but actually it, there's obviously there's a fuse so it would have just popped the fuse but yeah oh, the unit that we bought was not for the model of the car that we had. Yeah. It was for like the next so year. You guys were yeah. forcing it into this one. So we were trying to, like, we were just trying to figure it out. And then, yeah. Like I said, we had to take the out and then stick it onto the one that we already had. Then the hazards weren't working. Then we had to switch something else. Yeah. And then we were like, okay, we're we can get this working. So that's the thing with cars. We were like, we so can you, get this you working. You can get to that stage a lot at a time. Like yeah. You can't stop. You need to continue Bro. until it's done. <laughs> we got to a point where we were like, we can get this thing working if we're willing to not have hazards. I was like, do I need that? Oh, how? how no I was thinking, way. I, I was thinking, how would I use hazards? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? My wife is in, drives this car as well. We got the kids. That is not going to do this. We didn't do that. We didn't do that. Yeah, you need but, hazards in the Yeah, Dubai, you bro. need hazards. So, <laughs> you need hazards. So then we went, we managed to get fixed though. But yeah, we couldn't get the reverse camera. It turned out, bro, that um, the guy yesterday when I went to the car uh, place, he said, you can't put uh, original reverse camera with an aftermarket, aftermarket monitor. Okay. It doesn't work. So you have to buy a new uh, things. So that's why we were trying to plug it. So no matter what we would have done, it wouldn't have worked. And so then, um, so then he, he did that. But the reverse camera only cost me 250 dirhams. And I could have got a cheaper one, but I got like the waterproof one or something. But I don't know. As someone that's not a car guy, was it a good experience? Because like, after you're like, you know what, maybe we can get the wheels done. Maybe we can get this Yeah, it's done. addictive, it's addictive, it's addictive. It's when addictive, you get something yeah. done in your car, it's just like, I'm I just so wonder honest. If it's but, so addictive. But, yeah. but, but, but bro, price wise, it cost me 40 pound. Uh, basically, to get a reverse camera fitted, and it's I thought just labor, isn't it? I thought that's not that expensive to get the yeah, that's the piece. Oh, that's, that's cheap. That was in the UK the, is much more. Oh, that's what I was thinking. The UK be more. They're ripping out the whole like insides. They take the boot off. They take everything off to get the wire yeah. done. Yeah, so it's, just, it's longer. I you did it in like thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, you did it in front of me. That's experience, yeah. isn't it, bro? That was the product and the installation was forty quid. I thought that was quite good, not knowing what to compare it to. That's quite cheap. Bro. And yeah. I thought in the UK, if I went to get a reverse camera, it would cost me forty quid. They say like 200 quid or something. Just the electric, yeah, this, 200, 300 pounds, 500 pounds. This guy just oh. twisted it in, plugged it in. He was like, oh, you plugged your radio into your reverse camera. I was like, oh. <laughs> plugged that out. But yeah, now I've got CarPlay and stuff for my 2018 car. It makes a big difference. Though. It does make a big difference, yeah. bro. Now it's like, bro, I can't imagine driving my, uh, CarPlay now. It's got a Waze on the big screen it's and true, stuff like man. that. CarPlay is actually quite important to us. Yeah, yeah, UK yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that Waze works here better than Google yeah. Maps. Bro, you know Waze is so good. I used it in, in Sudan. Oh, really? 2018. I used really? Waze in Sudan, bro. Yeah. Oh, wait. In <clears throat> a Sudan or in Sudan? In Sudan. Oh, okay. Bro. I was in Africa, bro, using Waze in 20, 2018. Is yeah. there Sudan the name of a car? Is there a car called a Sudan? I feel like there is. Sedan. 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 Fine. No, because I thought you meant Sudan the country, but then you said in tw uh, you said Sudan 2018, and I was like, oh. Because I, 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 I have a 2018 as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was using Waze there, uh, and I was like, whoa. Really? Waze works here. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. actually works. Yeah. So what, what would you say is a good uh, car for... Um, 
What's a good, like, reliable car that also looks good that you'd be happy in? Because I know, like, as someone who's into cars, I've seen the cars you're pulling up in, bro. Yeah, so I think that's like a, a person who's like, you know, really into cars, yeah, a A regular person like, wants a nice car, but also wants a reliable car. Uh, what's a good uh, go-to car that you've seen that? But is that... Who? Yeah, in UAE I suppose or UK? In, do, you want, do UAE and do UK? Uh, family man. Family man, you know, he's... Your average Joe. What's the your, most what's, average what's Joe. Your, okay, what's your budget? What's your budget? That's, That's the first thing. <laughs> what's your budget? <laughs> Well, well, this person doesn't exist. Well, it's not for me. I'm not in the market for a car. Just go on. All works are on a budget, yeah. Um, no, that. okay. Uh, the, the point is, is yeah, we're missing the point here. The point is, like, what, what car would you, uh, what car do you think is like, a, uh, like a good car? You see out a lot um, on the street, on the roads, and it's like a reliable car. Like, if you ask me that question, I would say, I would say, oh, Pajero, because it looks like everyone drives one here. It's cheap to um uh, again this is what i'm hearing everyone says that it's cheap to source or to fix yeah uh, everybody has the parts and they're built for like off-road and stuff here there's a lot of off-road so you know if you're looking for a car a reliable car that looks half decent go get pajero i would advise people in the in dubai to get a patrol okay in the same patrol whether Fine. it's old or new okay whatever you can afford they're amazing cars really <clears throat> yeah they're very good cars very good family cars they're reliable a patrol bro you see like i think the the, the what are the the royal, royals here has as a patrol right? I think the main royal family drive G wagon. Yeah, yeah. G wagon is like the signature car in the UAE. But yeah, patrols are very good too. They're very reliable. In the UK, I would say. Can I guess? Go on. A reliable car in the UK. A reliable ev everyday car in the UK. I would say. I wouldn't say Ford. I think Ford. Uh, maybe not. I definitely would not say Vauxhall. I've had Vauxhall experience with Vauxhall. Terrible. Yeah, but bro. Terrible. Horrible car. I've only owned. One other car before this year, and it was a Vauxhall Astra. Rough, rough. I didn't know because I don't know anything about cars, but getting that fixed, it was night. I've been in the garage so many times, uh, so definitely not say Vauxhall. Probably wouldn't say Ford. I, I would say um, you're in the UK. You don't care about looks and stuff. You want a reliable, good car. Actually, you do care a bit about looks. I would say because if you just don't mind, I would say Toyota. But in the UAE, Toyota is respected. In the UK, I feel like it's not respected. It's not, yeah. yeah. So okay, fine. So I'm gonna go German. But in Germany now, you're getting a bit expensive here. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, definitely not Range Rover because it's unreliable and expensive to fix. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with... Uh, no, because I think BMWs and Mercedes aren't... I think, I think the first thing to notice is it's mad. When I came here, it's mad to see how the trends in cars are so different here than they are back Yeah, home. but yeah. it's nuts. And you it's kind of like tell an what, opposite. You can no you kind of tell what country a person's from from the car they're driving. Bro. They have, a, they have a trend that they bring here. They do not respect BMW and Mercedes bro, here. Yeah. Yeah. And in the UK, it's like BMW. And then here, imagine you go back to the UK, bro. A person's never been to Dubai and they're like, what? And you're minted, bro. And like, what car do you drive? You're like, Nissan. They're like, or Toyota. They're like, bro. What? But here, bro, the yeah. Nissan Toyotas are like top of like yeah, yeah. state of the art, bro. Everyone like the they're it's driving in like Pakistan. When you go back home, they like them bigger cars as well. Yeah, 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 yeah literally. Uh, all right, so I, I can't. I give up. I don't, I don't know. A reliable, a decent reliable car in the UK. I don't know. Volkswagen. Like, Kia. Volkswagen. Oh, Volkswagen. Okay. Yeah, Germans. Germans. Volkswagen. Oh yes, I was trying to think of a German car that's like like affordable. Volkswagen. That's Volkswagen. My, my dad always told me he's like Volkswagen. If you're gonna get a car. German or Japanese, you'll be all right. Do you know Especially what, bro? Volkswagen was some nice looking cars, bro. There was that car that uh, 4x4 with Volkswagen 4x4. Tiguan. Tiguan. I like that. Tiguan, yeah. Tiguan I was thinking about getting that here, but German cars, they're apparently, nice. you don't do it. They're nice cars. But you don't do German cars here, innit? You don't want, sorry? You don't want to do German cars here. No. Yeah, because my, my, my friend had a Volkswagen, uh, Tiguan. Mm. Or, what, did he, what did he have? Tiguan. You weren't here. When Kaya. Yeah, probably Tiguan. Yeah. yeah, he had a Volkswagen and he said it was a nightmare. So here you it's don't go for to them. Get the parts here, the German parts. Yeah. But what's, what surprised me here is how many Teslas there are here. Everyone thinks and petrol's, petrol's so, cheap. so cheap. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I always think like, why would you buy a Tesla? I guess electric's cheaper. But no, like, do you know what? No, my that. my friend cheaper. drives it's a trend. Yeah, my it's friend drives a Tesla, Sorry, yeah, and he did say it's cheaper in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a trend as well. Like, it's, it's, it's a trend. It's definitely a trend. Yeah. Definitely. Like a new, it, yeah. I had like, for example, with cars though. You mentioned Range Rovers that they're not reliable. 100% I agree but wallahi I can't stop driving Range Rovers like I came here I bought a Range Rover <clears throat> in the UK okay when oh, I was you, about you drive Range Rover right? yeah, yeah, yeah I got a Range oh, Rover I'm sorry bro when, <laughs> when I was in uh, the, when I was in the UK when I was about 20 years old yeah yeah 
So alhamdulillah, I made some money from flipping cars and so on. I saved some money. Because okay. you're young now, so you're 23? 24. 24. So, I'll, and, and look at the logic of, of, of subhanAllah, like being a 20 year old, young, no knowledge, not listening to, 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 to family. Like, I had all this wealth, I thought, do my thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I went to buy a Range Rover, a Vogue, from a dealership. And I'm someone who buys and sells cars <laughs> on the side that I went to a dealership. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to treat myself. I don't know what I was thinking. I was so bad with money Does dealership finances. mean it's brand new or can you get second hand for dealership? You no. get second hand. Okay, it was second hand. It wasn't brand new. But, but it was, it was, it was, dealership is expensive. They're going to bump like you. Just, and, long yeah, story yeah. short, with dealerships, they, they make a huge profit. Okay. Do you get it? Like yeah. they because they offer you warranty and so on so forth. And also because a person who doesn't know about cars is gonna say, I wanna go dealership. Yeah, so the capitalist. Like, I me, trust, I can trust it. I'm a yeah. dealership guy. I just saw it as I'm spending all this money, it's a lot of money. I just wanna be safe. Yeah. That's the lie I was telling myself. That, that's how but, I am. But I know I can go and get one cheaper yeah, and still be safe. You know, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's yeah. also kind of an experience, but you only go to the dealership. That's it. Take that's what it is. Off. That's what it You're is. Buying the feeling as well. Yeah, is that's it? what it is. So uh, like Looking back at it, though, it was such a dumb mistake that I made. But anyways, this was, I went there, I just sat down, like, listen, that car, how much? I, I can't, like, I feel like a boss. He was like, it was like 20, 30,000 pounds, something like that. I was like, look, I'll pay you cash. I'll buy it today. Do you get a discount if you do that? That's what I said. Okay. I'll buy it today. If you give me a discount. They want their commission, innit? I was yeah. like, if you give me a discount, I'll buy it today. And he looked at me, and he was in Manchester. I went to Manchester. And he was like, Bro, <laughs> so talking to me in the accent, it was, it, was, it was a sick experience, I can't lie. He was like, look, I can knock off a thousand pounds. Yeah? You want it, take it. You don't want it, leave it. And that's the culture of buying and selling. When, when you reach a stage, like yeah. when, you're, when you reach a stage where you've dealt with people, you've dealt with, you, like you've negotiated with a bunch of people, you've sold to a bunch of people, you, you lose that fear of, oh, am I going to lose the client? Uh... Or am I going to... You that know the value like, of your okay. product. Yeah, yeah, when your yeah. product is good and you're, you know your price is amazing, you're confident, right? Yeah. You've got confidence now. So he had his product and he was telling me, look, this is the price. You want to take it. You don't want to leave. And I understood that. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that. I do that as well now. Like people that try and buy cars from me, I'm just like, bro, like 3,000 pounds? You want to take it? You don't want it? Please don't waste my time in the nicest way possible. Yeah. I've reached that stage, alhamdulillah. But before, I would hesitate. Oh, okay, I'll lose maybe. No, it's not a loss, but I'll lose from my profit. Yeah. Maybe like 100 pounds, 200 pounds, yeah. just because of this negotiation tactic that I didn't know about. You see? And uh, anyways, his negotiation tactic worked on me that I used myself. That's good, the logic. <laughs> and, did you, and you got it? I bought it. Okay. I bought the car. When you, and, then when, and then you liked it so I couldn't much get when you came it. here. I couldn't get short to it. I was too young. I've heard that people do that. Yeah. I've heard that you can't always get short in a car. Yeah, that's just certain liters and certain bigger cars. Too and hard. I, I used to, I done so much to that. I, it's, like you guys said, it's addictive. Yeah, I bought the car, I wrapped it in the UK, and I, I'll be honest though, for networking, it was sick. I can, I suppose, look, especially in your industry, bro. I'll show you. I'll send you a you picture. Can't. You can show it. And it had like Fine. a nice private reg on it. It said nice. me Y, me Y M three three W H Y. Oh wow! So it was yeah, it stood out. It was nice. I wrapped it in black. Uh, but first of all, we're gonna introduce. Oh, <laughs> um, Very secondly, bro, uh, what was I gonna say? Okay, so you liked so much that you, when you came here, you got a Range Rover as well. Yeah, yeah. Bought a Range Rover. But if you look, if you, I, I think I'm you know what you're it. doing with cars, yeah, and you know you know the cars and Range Rovers. I'm sure it's like not difficult, but I think for like the layman, I've heard that it can be uh, difficult to fix and stuff like that. Yeah, like so check in the car. That's what yeah. it is. And also for me, as long as the car is under market value, I'll buy any car. To be honest, as long as I know I've got room to make profit. Buy it. And for us, I wanted to ask you because you obviously have done some buying and selling cars. And being someone who's more into cars, did you have any questions for someone who's bought and sold 100 cars that comes to mind? Uh, that comes to mind. Estimated. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> um, so. On your course, obviously, there's so many different routes when it comes to buying and selling cars, right? Yeah. Is it, do you, what's your preferred route of buying cars? Because obviously, we know that there's auctions. Even in UAE, I heard there's like a Mount Hubble auction. In the UK, there's a BCA. There's coal part, stuff like that. There's private buying and selling. What's your like preferred route? To be honest, I wouldn't really advise people to go to auction. Really? Nah. I wouldn't. And I tell my students as well, like, don't buy from auction. Like, keep that as like your third option. <laughs> like, unless... And, 
even if you do want to get something, just come through me. I'll check it for you. Because look, here's the thing. So one of the cars I was flipping was an Audi Q7. It's a seven-seater. I like that car. It's nice. And I bought it. It was damaged in the front. Um, anyways, um, it was originally from Copart. Now, Copart doesn't give you details. It just says starts, drives, or it says mechanical fault, or it says unknown. Do you get it? Like, you don't get details just, that you need. So, Copart is like... Um, it's an auction site. It's, yeah. it's this auction that basically sells cars. In the UK. In the UK. Okay. Um, and here's... This is something a lot of people didn't know, and they, um, like, is that you can sell your car in Copart. Okay. Do you get it? Okay. So, really and truly, you're not really buying from an auction. You're just... You, you, you're buying the car, for, yes, from the auction, but they're kind of like a, they're just... Um, it's normally damaged goods. They're a third party. They sell yeah. cars for people and they make a profit. That's mm -hmm. just what they do. I sold that car back to Copa. I took a loss, a thousand pound loss, a thousand two hundred pound loss. But the point is that someone else could have bought it with the intention of flipping it. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know the damage that it's got in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I wouldn't advise to buy from auction because you can't go to physically check the car before you purchase yeah. it. That's really interesting because you hear... That if you're going to buy and sell cars, you do it on auction. And also, there was, a, there was a time when we were buying on auction in the UK, and you can very easily get auction fever, where like you see, your pride kind of gets into it, and someone's trying to, like, there's one person that's just bidding with you. Yeah. And then you might have a set budget. You need to have a lot of like self control to be like, well, yeah. he's trying to one up me. I, I one up him. And then your, your yeah, budget's at yeah, four yeah. grand. Your then pride has to like, literally be four to the five, side. and then you end up losing out of 500. Like, yeah. When it comes to cars, every penny counts from the petrol to the insurance to, to yeah. everything. Um, and there's, there's so many different tactics, but yeah, man, it's um, but here's the thing it's though. Nice, it's a nice game to get into. It's though. nice, yeah, it's quite nice. And what I liked about it the most is literally like I just I drive nice cars and make money from them. Yeah, and that is kind of nice. like because you said obviously earlier on, it said that it, it, it hurts people's pockets. Mm. But it doesn't hurt mine. It's yeah, you see what I'm saying? yeah, you're on the right side you, of the you, game. You basically made the made the business out of your hobby, innit? So that's it. You're making money while driving the cars you want to drive. That's so you must be driving a new car every day. I would say every day, but alhamdulillah I've driven. Sick cars like Rolls Royces, Lamborghinis, like Ferrari. I've driven. What's your favorite car that you've driven? To be, I'll be so real. Yeah, if yeah. I had about, if I had a million, yeah, pounds to spend on cars right now. Not on cars in general, but if I had a million pounds in my account, yeah, I wouldn't even buy a supercar. I wouldn't buy a Ferrari. I wouldn't buy a, a Urus. I wouldn't buy. What would you buy? A Rolls Royce Colin. That I've heard a lot of people say that they are so comfortable, bro. Yeah, it's like a drive. Full, they're comfortable bro, to drive. They are it's extreme luxury, bro. Really? I really want to drive that. Have you, you are driven amazing. one? Yeah. Oh, I'll just drive that and see what that's like. I've driven a um, Lamborghini and a G wagon and a. This has all been since I come to Dubai because I'm not into cars, but it fall, bro, when I tell you it's fallen on my lap, bro. Someone brought a uh, rented a Lamborghini for a day for me. <laughs> Sounds sick, bro. Another person. That's nice. Bro, <laughs> That's another, nice, isn't it? Bro, that don't happen in the UK, bro. <laughs> yeah. Another person rented me a G wagon. Yeah. And I was like, for a week, like uh, for a few days, I was dropping my son back to her from school. Joe, bro, it does give you a bit of an ego, though. And it gives you road presence that like, people like bro. don't want to come in front of you and stuff like I that. I think something like G wagon is so difficult to stay within the speed limit. Not yeah. because you enjoy it, but because you touch the pedal, you're like, is that, you don't even yeah, feel. I think here the limit was 130 kilometers an hour. Bro, I could, it was hard physically to go lower than that. Yeah, I had that issue coming here, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the one that you are driving was not. This is even a G-Wagon. This is a, so it is, it's a G-Wagon. It's, it's a Brabus. What is that? Brabus is that like, like, car, like Khan edition, like, you know, the Range Rover? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. My Brabus. brother knows that guy, Afzal Khan. Yeah. Yeah, my brother's friends with him. Oh, or at least he knows him. He's like, I think they're friends. Yeah, Brabus is the similar same. It's, it's up there, isn't it? It's, it's but but Brabus only do G wagons, or they no, do anything. No, they do a few. They even oh, do Rolls Royces. They do, uh, you can they get do a like, smart car. Smart yeah, yeah, car Brabus. yeah, yeah. You're right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they're like triple the price. Yeah. Of a G. Of a so uh, Brabus would uh, uh, the the, guy, the Brabus guy would buy a G wagon brand new, do it up and sell it. They would, yeah, they'll, they'll change the body kit. Um, He's like Mr. Flip Whips. He's essentially you could become. You people could want to buy a Flip Whips car. No, for real. Yeah. My last permission, inshallah, yeah. That would be um, sick. Yeah. Customising cars is another great thing. Even like flipping cars, like what I, what I do is, um, another like, it's, it's a marketing strategy, is that I'll make the car look so attractive. Yeah. Like if you look at my cars that I own, there's nothing you need to do to it. You just need to plug and play. You just Slap, take, buy it and drive it. Blacked out wheels, maybe tinted it's, windows. It's customised to the fullest. It I looks amazing. It looks sick. <laughs> Bro, imagine this, yeah. You know... 
why don't you sell your cars uh, on payment plans to Muslims, yeah? I do that as well, yeah. Oh, that's such a great idea. I because, do that. I because no interest, there's, there's yeah. no, because, bro, no interest, you, yeah. If you try and get a payment plan for a car anywhere, even if you get it right interest, it's hard to find one that has no interest and also doesn't have late payment fees, which then comes into the world as well. So it's like, how do you do it? But if you have someone who's like, cool, I would normally show this for 10 grand. I'm going to say for 12, but that's the... That's the price, yeah. and you can buy it for you can buy it over. Uh, you can make like yeah. your profit basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, like, if you're not panicking for money, yeah, 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 yeah. it's just obvious way to make more yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, it's oh, true. That's good, but I've done oh, it. You do a that. Bit. So I don't do it oh. fully. It's not something I really do out there, but I do. I've done it a couple of times. It, it was. I'll be so honest. It's good because when you flip cars, you don't have a monthly stable and you're helping income. You're Muslim, but bro, imagine the akhirah was. Bro. Of course, subhanallah. So, I I'll be honest. Like I've got. A couple of cars in the UK So if anyone is interested I'm more than happy to do that as, Really? As long as they're trustworthy Yeah as long Yeah as bro the, Bro Trust them Someone here will listen <clears> to that and do it yeah, yeah, if, I, bro, if I was listening to this in the UK I would have done that What type yeah, of, what type of cars are they? Car, like first cars Are Muslims, they like, 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 like so Higher end cars One of them is a Mercedes Benz S-Class Yeah So it's a luxury okay. Higher end Okay it's, it's a Anyone long, in the market for Mercedes Benz S-Class <laughs> Long wheelbase executive um, Long wheelbase executive It's a beautiful car Alhamdulillah one of those is a Range Rover Autobiography. So Come on. It's, it's the, the higher end cards. Range Rover yeah. Autobiography. Yeah. So yeah, but you're going to be paying, if you pay monthly for that, you're still going to be paying you're a, be bit, paying, a bit of change. Yeah, maybe you're a bit of change. Bit change. <laughs> 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 maybe in I bought my first car, my only car in the UK, yeah. uh, on a website called Interest Free for Cars. Okay. And they basically sold cars uh, interest free exactly this and there was no late payment fees with the way the, the one that I did it I don't know if they, they have different uh, finance suppliers yeah. but it's monthly interest free no late payment fee mm. I let, the, probably, I, the, the, the price was probably a lot higher than market price though, it right? was yeah. uh, of course yeah standard but that's how they have to make that's the thing with business a lot of people don't understand this but like, go on sorry I made you forget your point no no you didn't make me forget it was really me but I, I, I was going to say but um no, I, I was say, but now I also don't have the knowledge. Didn't have the knowledge then that I have now mm. more on like ribbon stuff. Mm. So now I would have looked even more into it because you don't even know within contracts. But inshallah, because I remember one time I was late, but I didn't get late payment fee. Yeah, alhamdulillah. But I, but but in hindsight, all those years ago, I would. But I had like a reliable brother, yeah, proper yeah. act who was like yeah. he used the website. So I was like, I trust him. Okay. But yeah. I would have looked into it further. But anyway, at the time, anyway, I looked at I looked recently that that website doesn't exist anymore. Mm. So maybe they went out of business. I know someone else that bought car from there. Yeah, because if you really think about it, you're not you you, you like it's not that profitable. It's, it's quite hard to be successful. You have that scale. Yeah. You know why? You've got to be, if you if you're making two grand over the space of five years. No, no, it's not even that. It's not even that. It's not that. It's are you guaranteed your money? Yeah, 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 that's what it is. Because especially for such a small profit, if people don't pay you, bro, yeah. how are you gonna pay your bills? How are you gonna pay for this place? Yes, how are you gonna pay the business? The money physically, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, stuff place, now yeah. that is one thing. Like I literally have a list of people that I'm still chasing in the UK for funds, and it's, yeah, really, it's very like yeah, it's kind of like it's so draining because it's, it's easier here in the UAE, right? Because there's certain you things can trust in place, people here, alhamdulillah, there's and, certain, and there's yeah, certain yeah. things you can't leave the country if you owe someone money. No, even that people just don't do that stuff, bro. Like it's just not a thing. That's one thing I mean, bro. The culture here is so different to the UK. UK, you have to watch over your back everywhere you go. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's it's what made it much here. Yeah, that's what made it so easy. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you guys can relate to just Safety. up and leave that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like you're always you're constantly, you know, worried, drained. It's so dark and dull. Yeah. You start yeah, subhanAllah like for me, like 2018 is when I was just like, this place? Not for me. Mm. SubhanAllah. I went to Sudan for about two years or so. Um stayed there for a while and I was so peaceful. So beautiful. I think you did such a, quite an amazing thing because you did it at such a young age. Yeah. You, and you did something that a lot of people struggle to do, which is I'm going to get up and go and I'm going to do, do my own thing, do my own business and make it work out there. And I imagine you didn't know the ins and outs of the market here. You might, and so that would, might, must have been scary. So I think that says a lot about your character. And actually, it's the people that take big risks that are successful. So. And especially if you're, not, if you're willing to fail and you accept that failure as a part of life, then you just accept it and you keep it moving. You have tawakkal in Allah and then it's, it makes it easier so I think uh, but yeah when we were speaking you're you know, a family man so that kind of stuff like makes a big difference so that ayah there someone literally said that to me when I was in two minds about leaving and going should I come should I not because I, I had such a good way of making money in the UK like I was I was good yeah 
Alhamdulillah. So have, have you ever had a job for someone else? Or you've always worked for yourself? No, you went straight into flipping whips? I went into flipping whips and I, I could never get a job after that. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Right, yeah. I, just kept, I just done my thing, kept it growing. Kept, I just had many cars. Another mm. thing I do is I will have like a bunch of cars and I'll just rent them. That's more money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More cash. So, so. Well, let me ask you this. Because obviously, Alhamdulillah, this is where you're at. There's so many ways that you could be making money selling cars. Right? Like I said, there's rental. There's the, the long-term halal interest refinancing. There's the course that you're doing. Long-term, obviously, a lot of people have different reasons they get into it. People want to have their own car lot where people yeah. come to buy cars, showrooms and stuff like that. What's your, what's your goal? What's like your goal with it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say my goal for this the year coming, inshallah, is to just focus and grow in the institute. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, really focus and grow, inshallah. Um, and um, because, like I said to you, that testimonial, like changing people's lives is it was, it was just amazing to him and mm. well I, I felt so good and i was like subhanallah like you know when something works it's yeah. like you know mm. that feeling so i i kind of I, yeah i want to feel a lot of that inshallah mm. i want to like really like like because for me i'll be honest it changed my life so you know pour more yeah. into the course yeah i wouldn't have had enough money there. to move here i wouldn't have had enough so, money sure, to sure. live the life i lived alhamdulillah i wouldn't have been able to do all of that so and and how how um, how is the course set out? Is it pre-recorded? Is it cohort live? Like how does it work? So the course is pre-recorded. Okay. So you go through all the lessons. Okay. How many lessons are there? There's about, I'd say nine to ten. Okay. There are two courses though. So okay. there's, that's another beautiful thing is that the two you courses. don't you don't yeah so you okay. don't need to learn you don't need to learn about flipping cars if you don't want to. Mm, there's okay. a course called how to maintain and it will just simply teach you how to like, maintain your car, how to get to know your car. The important things and factors about your car. Oh, that's nice. So, how, how much these two courses priced? So, how to maintain is about it's a two four nine. Okay. Uh, no, One sorry, off. three four nine. How to maintain, okay. and four nine nine. Uh, uh, flip a whip. Okay, fine. Yeah. And so, one off, yeah. And then you get access to the chat and stuff like that. You get access to you get a, you join the Discord. Okay. The rest of the team, you get access to me, and there's another mentor, uh, the brother Yasin, and you just we just help you get through it. So. Nice. And um, we make it as easy as possible. Cool, as easy man. as possible. Um, yeah. So if you want to drive nice cars and make money from them. <laughs> yeah, go to Mr. Flip Whips. So, uh, bro, I, I, I should say, because this whole episode has been about flip whips, flipping whips, and I should say that this is not, uh, just to defend my brother's honour here, this is in no way being like a sponsored episode or an advert or anything like that. We yeah. met on the plane. And I, I heard about what he does. I was like, look, I asked him to jump on the pod. I was like, I'd love to hear about it on the pod. And it's been lovely to hear about it. But uh, with that said, if anybody is interested in flipping whips, where can they go? So they'll go to flipwhipsinstitute.com Okay. Or you can go to Flipwhips Institute on Instagram. Or you can come to me, Mr. Flipwhips. And uh, I'll take it from there. Oh, there's, by the way, there's, I think you messaged me about this, the fake Instagram. So yeah, yeah, there's fake Instagram. Yes, I did message you. Yeah. So, wait, was it, who's, who? No, it was my uh, editor. Okay, Alon Barak. So, yeah, a lot of people were sending me screenshots of like someone asking people for Bitcoin or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know anything about Bitcoin or trading. But, uh, there's a fake account, so don't go to the <laughs> fake account. But that's actually interesting you say that actually about trading and Bitcoin and stuff because <clears throat> it sounds to me like um, buying and selling cars is very similar to the world of trading. Like you gotta know what you're doing. And even if I relate it to like um, digital marketing and and the world that I know, it yeah. even sounds like if people don't know about that world. Um, you're going to be paying consumer prices for things that if you just know what you're doing, mm-hmm. people yep. are saving a lot of money. And so for an example is something like, um, let's say, for example, you are um, setting up a business and you need an email uh, system, right? Like you, you've got an email newsletter yep. and then you use like um, uh, like MailChimp, like as in like a, a you know, MailChimp, MailerLite, these kind of things where... Um, you send people um, not necessarily like newsletters but um, bulk emails bulk emails and like that. Yeah. but MailChimp is like yeah the marketing emails MailChimp is like I remember when we first had it at Fresh and Grounded you pay I can't remember hundreds of pounds per month right? yeah. and, it, yeah. and it's ridiculously expensive but people who are technical who know what they're doing they can they can just like get uh, an open source version of it where it's basically free and you're running it on your own server and there's a lot of things like that that as I've um, like learn more about that world I realised that like the whole um, online world is essentially tools that are free or easy to use mm. and people market it towards individuals who don't know yeah. how to 
or what they do and they make it look pretty and they make it look professional and they'll charge you 50 pound a month mm-hmm. and it sounds like the car industry is very similar it's like if you know what you're doing and you put in a bit of work it's like the, there's a free way of doing this Bro, a lot of people don't even know when they open a bonnet which one's the coolant where's right. the engine yeah, so that's the thing so when they're buying a car themselves yeah they, they they're clueless right yeah. so not even that it can go deeper than that even like getting your car fixed you might it's easy to get bumped yeah you, yeah like yeah, but you're, Bro, you I, hear I, crazy I, stories, man. I, I, there's a there's a thing on a website called an SSL, and that an SSL is like what every website needs yeah. in order to be like to have HTTPS, right? right. Website, to be a secure website, everyone needs it. Yeah. And I remember when I first um, got a domain with GoDaddy, they were charging eighty pound a year for an SSL, and then there was one uh, one of Omer's developers was like, "You pay for an SSL, you pay uh, you pay eighty pound a year for SSL." Yeah, he's like, he's like. Wait, why do you pay for an SSL? I was like, what do you mean? Like, you have to. He's like, no, like, I could just like attribute an SSL or something to your website. I, I don't understand how that world works, but it made it sound like it's either free or like pennies uh, or like um, a few, it's not 80 pounds a year essentially, right? But like a company like GoDaddy is like, all right, chuck it for 80 pounds a year and make basically all of its profit. But you're right, yeah. The, the car flipping world is very similar to the other online world or like the trades or trade. stuff like that it's just more hands on more physical so for someone that might be a bit more hands on more physical they want to get nitty and gritty with it that's perfect I'm like myself I'm a lot more hands on than I am so, I'm in the digital world now but it's very different and yeah. it's, it's a different ball game but it's nice that you have you have these options and if you're mm. someone that thinks more hands on that's true then that's true because I, I, I think that um, <clears throat> uh, like dealerships and things like that I think that they're great for people like me who mm-hmm. you think do you know it's what I, I, I want peace of mind yeah, yeah. I, if I'm buying a car I don't buy a car every month I have a budget for it yeah. and I'm prepared for it I'll pay you more just pay you more give me these the, guarantees yeah, I, I know no it's not even the, it's not the guarantees or the warranties that's not what I, I like it's just a smoother process, Bro, process. peace of mind yeah. I, bought, I like going in cool whips there I see it it's comfortable it's comfortable I could, like, you, you, it's not going to be one of those ones where it's like a cat D and they turn to cat don't worry sir we've done a 120 bro. point check in one that's of our I'm garages saying. that's what I need the guy before and that's just my personality the, the day before they send you a video the car's ready it's all yeah. so I think it's a marketing, so, so it's a marketing strategy. Yeah. strategy it's amazing but going back to the point that you mentioned about the digital world for example like me someone who's transitioning from being out every day flipping cars finding cars I used to go up to Manchester Birmingham Liverpool for parts mm. and crazy crazy things like I done I went everywhere for parts um, and getting cars I got cars from a chicken farm once we got cars from subhanAllah we went to, it was an amazing experience mm. but that transition from that to being behind the computer yeah, screen all day long yeah. that's mad yeah it's crazy like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm you, struggling with it like, you know you had to do the video. It's my favorite way to live. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, like, I'm, I'm genuinely struggling with it. Like, I'll take any advice you have, but like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously I'm getting into. You got to build school. a home office that's really comfortable, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to like, oh, yeah. get in there, but but even the social media aspect, being behind a camera, filming yeah. videos, editing. Yeah, that's them. that's also a new so, thing for me. Like, but both you, you're very well spoken on camera. Yeah, I appreciate it. So you. that confidence that you have that will that will be beneficial for you, and then um, like I think that there's a few more courses that you could create without Shut dampening up. the brand Shut especially up. with like the customization and stuff and uh, but I, I think Flipper's Institute will be as, as big as it is now even bigger bro and Shut I think up. you've got good people behind you and if, like around you you know Mohammed. he's obviously smashed the uh, online yeah. courses route he's an amazing brother Bakr, Imran yeah. so you know, these guys know marketing brothers. very well so I think that the circle that you have and your own passion in cars like there's no doubt that you're gonna you're gonna smash it man. yeah inshallah inshallah Imran is a big uh, part of that he pushed me very hard and yeah. he's I, I don't he's regret it. Yeah, he motivated. They all do. Yeah. Mohammed and Alusi, Abu Bakr, Imran. They have like it's good to have yeah, I need to 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 to, to have uh, righteous companions, yes. they say, right? Yes. So yeah. Alhamdulillah, I don't think I would have done it if oh. they weren't around well, me. May Allah make it successful and JazakAllah Khair for giving us your time today as well. It's been Barakallah lovely. Fiqh. And then it's lovely to meet you again. Welcome back on again anytime, bro. Inshallah. Yeah. Take care, bro. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for was.